Okay, and now let's take a look at how we can send data to the server. And we do that with a post method, which references the HTTP post method. And in here, not only we want to pass in the URL, but actual data we want to send to the server. And additionally, if you need to add more info about the request, for example, authorization header comes to mind. Then, like I mentioned in the previous video, we'll pass this in as a third argument. Now, with that said, in the following videos, we'll cover global instance, we'll cover custom instance, and we'll also cover interceptors. And if you use one of those approaches, most likely you can just bypass passing this directly in the request. Again, we'll cover those things in the following video, so you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, as far as our example, I already have the app.js open. And in here I have the setup, and I'm looking for the file number three, so three post request, and I'm rendering it on the screen. Now, as far as the file, in here I have the form where I have two values, name and email. Now, both of them are set up as state values right away with your state. And I'm also right away importing the Axios instance. Then notice how I have handle submit right away, prevent the default. And also, I just want to check whether I have the results. Uh, if you take a look at the inputs, I have the value and I also have the on change. Like I said, I already prepared this boilerplate so we can just focus on the Axios. So here's the main goal. I have the course API server and on there I have the route by the name of Axios tutorial post. So this one you cannot test out in the browser because it's looking for the post request. More specifically in the request, it's looking for name and email. Now we're not going to save the user in a database or nothing like that. But if we provide both values, we'll get back successful response. Or if one of them is going to be missing, then we'll get back the our response. And that clearly is going to show us how we can send post request with Axios. And let's start simply by just making sure that we can see both of the values. So let me go to the input. I'll say John at gmail.com. And once I press on login, I see both values. Okay, so now we can start setting up our request, where we want to go with try and catch, let's set up the response right away. That one will be equal to await, then axios, then post. And like I said, first, we pass in the URL. So this is where we'll be sending that data. And then comma, and actual data we want to send. And I want to grab the state values. And I'm fully aware that we have a shorthand for this. But initially, let's just go with name equals to name and email equals to email, because I think it's going to be easier to understand in the beginning. Then let's log the sucker. So let's say your response, and I'm going to be looking for data right away. And the same goes for the error. So let's go log error, and then response. Let's save this. And now I want to navigate to the big browser because I want to showcase the network request. So let's navigate over here. Let's refresh. And we're going to go here with john and john at gmail.com. Let's press login. And now take a look at our request. So first of all, notice the request method is post. So now we're sending data to the server. And also we can take a look at the payload right away. So this is what we're sending. We have name, and that is equal to whatever we have in input. And the same goes for the email. Now, when it comes to response, since we provide both values in response, you'll see message user created. Again, we're not saving this in the database, but the general idea is going to be exactly the same, where this is the response you're going to get back. Now, most likely, you also get the JSON web token. But again, that is besides the point. And then I have the user name, John, email, and then also a full name where I just add the dough. And then if you want to test this out, whether everything works, maybe you're like, okay, this is just a standard response that you're getting back. Let's go with Susan. And you'll notice that 
server again is looking at both of those values and if they're provided then again we get back the user with this susan though and now let's also test it out what happens if we don't provide one of the values so first let me just shorten this up like i said starting with es6 we have this ability for the shorthand like so so name is equal to name email is equal to email and then i'll send a request without providing the name value and yes i'm fully aware that normally we're going to check this in the front end as well but the main goal of this video is to showcase what type of error response we're going to get back so let me remove here the name in the input and now what you'll notice in the console is an error so we have 400 bad requests and also in the data we'll have this message property with please provide both values so that's how we can send post requests using axios where it returns a promise so most likely we'll stick a wait in front of it axios.post so that's the method name then we pass in the url and then the data we want to send to the server